What's up guys, here's Shine. Hello and welcome to my new Photoshop tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how you can create a so-called throbber. A throbber is a GIF with this rotating circle that appears on websites when medias are loading, like video players. So in case you need this for your web design or programming or whatever, you're going to see here how you can create it very fast and very easily. You see I've already prepared here something for you. This document is a 200 pixel square. First we have to create a so-called guide layout. For that we go up here to view and choose new guide layout. We set the columns and the rows to 2 and confirm. And you see these guides that have been created here. We're going to need them for positioning. Then we're going to choose the rounded rectangle tool that can be found here in the shapes and right click on it and choose the rounded rectangle tool and let's choose the color let's say 30% gray okay and now click wherever you want here once and choose the width 15 pixels and the height 50 pixels the radius 50 pixels can stay like that press ok and now let's position this horizontal in the middle and at the top. Let's close this. First press Command Arrow Striker to select all and press V to select the move tool. And to align it horizontal in the center, press now here. And to dock it on top, we press here. There you go. And press Command Arrow Striker now to deselect. Now we have to zoom in a bit. For that, let's press Command Zero Strike Zero to make the document or the canvas fit to the screen. And while this is selected, we press Command T or Strike T, and now we hold Alt and drag the reference pointer, this which is this fellow here in the middle, here to the middle to the point where the two guides cross, as good as and close as you can, right? And while this transformation is active, we go up here to the rotation field and type in now plus 30 and confirm we created a transformation and you see this object has been tilted not around its own axis but the reference point we have positioned here. While this layer is selected we hold shift alt command or shift alt strike and press T. And you see what happens. It has repeated this transformation we just created earlier and at the same time it has created a new layer. So now let's press this combination multiple times to create the circle. And that's it. All right. And now we we merge all these objects by holding shift and select the final rounded rectangle and press command your strikey. Right. Now it's all on one layer. Now we don't need the guides anymore, so let's delete them. Go up here to to view and clear guides. All right. And the next thing we need is now a so-called gradient layer, which can be found down here in the adjustments. Click here and choose gradient. All right, and for the style, let's choose angle. And you see the gradient fills the right side of the document, but we need the gradient to fill the left side. So, so we check your reverse. It has to be on this side because the rotation, the animation is going to be clockwise. And to make the gradient more smooth, let's check the other two. And you see the edge of this gradient here is, is too sharp a bit. So let's make it a bit softer by going up here and choose the white cursor I change your location let's say to 85 and now click on the black cursor here once so that when we click here then it creates another black cursor and you see here the edge is now much smoother more blurry all right and confirm that's it and now we convert this gradient layer into a so-called smart object we go to the layer, right click and select convert to smart object, okay? And create a so-called clipping mask with pressing Alt Command G or Alt Strike G. Or just go up here to the layer, right click and choose create clipping mask. And now you see the gradient is now limited to the area of the layer below. Okay, and that's all the layers we need. Now, the next thing we're going to work with now is the so-called timeline. Let's first zoom the view out a bit. Let's press Command 1 or Strike 1 to make a 100% view. 
Now we have to open the timeline window. In my case, it's down here. For you, you can just go up here to window and choose timeline. And you see here, the layers here are also visible. And let's open here this gradient fill layer and create our first keyframe by pressing here on transform on this clock here. You see, this yellow dot represents a keyframe. Right, now we're going to let this gradient fill layer rotate. For that, we first zoom in here until we see these time points, which start with 05F. We click now here on this point so that the cursor jumps there. And while this layer is selected, we press again, Command your Strike T, and we go up here to the rotation field again and type in additionally to the value which is here already, plus 90, okay? And let's copy this value we've typed in, plus 90, Command C or Strike C, and confirm. There you see another keyframe has been created. Now let's do the same again with the next time point here. Again, Command your Strike T, and additionally to this value, press Command your Strike V to paste it, and confirm, and again, confirm. We have to do this so many times until this layer is back on the starting point again. So it makes a total 380 degrees spin or rotation. Right, again. And confirm. There you see the black areas on the top again. So we made our total rotation. And that's it. Now the animation has been created. And if we now zoom out here, this timeline, until we see the end of this layer, we drag this until this cursor here, and with this one too, right, and jump to the start, and press play and you see what happens. There you go. Press stop. And now all you have to do is now to export it as a GIF. Before you do that, please remember to deactivate this background layer because it has to be a transparent GIF and go up here to File, Export, Save for Web, Legacy and make sure that you have selected here the GIF here file type and you probably have been wondering why this document is so big, I mean 200 pixels. I made it like that so you can see better what you're doing. If you have to or what, just want to export it in another dimension or a smaller dimension, you, you can just go down here to image size and choose a smaller value, let's say 50 pixels. And you see now it has a smaller and if you press play again, you can see how it looks. There you go. And then you just have to save and choose any location you want. All right, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you to get better in Photoshop. Comments are appreciated as much as likes and new subscriptions. And don't be shy to check out my other tutorial videos on my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.